I often want to find approximate roots. Well, here's the setup. I start with some nice function f. Nice might mean differentiable, maybe the derivative is continuous, a, a reasonable function. And then I want to find some input x so that the function evaluated at that input is equal to 0. Now, in practice, this is way too much to ask for. I'm not really going to be able to find some particular input x. I mean, I might not even be able to write down that input in any reasonable uh, sense. But what I can ask for is I can find uh, some x so that uh, f of x is very close to 0. Right? I mean, maybe I can't find it so that the output of the function is equal to 0, but maybe I can find an input so that the output there is really close to 0, really small. If you think back, we've already done this. right? If you remember this video where I used the intermediate value theorem, I was able to approximate a root of a function just by interrogating the function, evaluating it at a handful of points. Remember, it was that bisection trick. So in this example, it looks like the function evaluated at a is positive and the function evaluated at b is negative. This function looks like a reasonably nice function. It looks continuous, so the intermediate value theorem applies. And that means in between a and b, there's some input where the function's output is 0. Now I can cut this interval in half. And if I look in the middle of the interval, the function's output there is positive. And that means just in between these two inputs, there must be some input where the function's output is uh, 0. And then I could cut that in half again. And if I look at the input there, the output of the function is negative. And that means in between these two inputs, there must be some input so the function's output is 0. And then I could cut that in half again. And if I look there, the function's output is positive. So I've got a negative output and a positive output. So in between, by the intermediate value theorem, there must be some input where the function's output is 0, and so on and so forth. Right? I'm getting closer and closer to the point where the function's output is actually equal to 0. At least I can approximate it this way. The downside to this bisection method is just speed. It takes a really long time. So a different method, called Newton's method, is much faster than this bisection trick. Well, at least it's faster when it actually works. So what is Newton's method? What I'm trying to do is find the x-coordinate where the graph of this function crosses the x-axis. Right? I want to know an input so that this function's output there is 0. And instead of marching in from either side using the intermediate value theorem, Newton's method has us just start by making a potentially bad guess. Here's my first guess. I'm going to call it x sub 0. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's not a very good guess because the function's output is all the way up here, not that close to 0. But after I've made that first guess, Newton tells us to draw the tangent line to the curve uh, through, through that point. So here's the tangent line to the curve through that point. And then my next guess will be wherever that tangent line crosses the x-axis. So here will be my next guess, x sub 1. And then I just hope that that next guess is better. But I could repeat the process. Right? I could do the same game here. This point is closer to 0. And then I could again draw another tangent line to the curve through that point. And then this next place where that tangent line crosses the x-axis, that'll be x sub 2, my next guess. And at least from this picture, it looks like that's an even better guess as to where the graph of this function crosses the x-axis. So at least pictorially, that's what Newton's method is telling us to do. Let's write down the steps. Well, here's Newton's method in words. All right, you start with some initial guess, x0. The next step is to draw the tangent line through the point x0, f of x0. Right? That's exactly what I did here. I started with x0, and then I drew this first red tangent line. Now the next step is to figure out where that tangent line, right, the tangent line right there, crosses the x-axis. And I'm going to use that for my new guess, x sub 1, which I hope will be a better guess for my original guess. Right? My original guess was pretty far away from 0. x1, which is where the tangent line here crosses the x-axis, I'm hoping that that's a better guess. And yeah, at least in this example it is. And then I'm going to repeat the process. Right? In this picture, 
once I had my new guess x sub 1, I then drew the tangent line to the graph at x1 comma f of x1. And that tangent line intersects the x-axis at a point I'm calling x sub 2. And I'm just hoping then that that's even a better guess as to the actual point where the graph crosses the x-axis. All right, so that's this repeat process. And you can just keep repeating this as long as you want. And you know, hopefully, you're getting better and better guesses every time as to exactly where that graph crosses the x-axis. Let's work this all out with equations, right? I'm going to write down the equation of the tangent line and then solve for where that tangent line crosses the x-axis. So I'm going to start by thinking about this red line, right? This red line is the tangent line to the orange graph at the point x0, f of x0. And it's a tangent line, so it has slope, the derivative, at x0. And here, I've written down the point slope form of the red line, right? It's y minus the y coordinate on the line, which is fx0, is equal to the slope of the line, which is the derivative at x0, times x minus the x coordinate on the line, which is x0. Now, Newton's method tells me that I should use that linear approximation to the graph, figure out where the linear approximation crosses the x-axis, and just hope that that's a better approximation to where the orange curve actually crosses the x-axis. So to do that, I'm going to set y equals 0, and I'm going to solve for x. Right? And that'll tell me where the red line crosses the x-axis if I solve this equation for x. Well, I can expand out uh, this side, right? And the right-hand side of this equation is f prime x0 times x minus f prime x0 times x0. And I'm going to add f prime x0 times x0 to both sides. So the equation becomes f prime x0 times x0 minus f of x0 is equal to f prime x0 times x, right? I just added f prime of x0 times x0 to both sides, and the 0 here went away, right? So f prime x0 times x0 minus f of x0 is equal to this, f prime x0 times x. Now, assuming that the derivative is not equal to 0 at this point, I'm going to divide both sides by f prime x0. When I divide this side by f prime x0, I just get x0 minus f of x0 divided by f prime x0. So that's this left-hand side divided by f prime of x0. The f prime x0 here canceled, and the f x0 divided by f prime of x0 is what I got here. And I'm dividing both sides by f prime x0, so this side is just x. So the x-coordinate where this red line crosses the x-axis is this. And I'm going to call this my new, hopefully improved guess, x sub 1. With this equation in hand, I can now write down the step-by-step -step process for Newton's method just using a formula. Now, here's the step-by-step -step process. I start with some initial guess, x sub 0. And then I'm drawing that tangent line to the graph at x0, f of x0, looking where that tangent line crosses the x-axis to get my new guess, right? And this is the formula we just computed. x1, my new guess, is x0 minus the function's value there divided by the function's derivative there. And with that new guess, I can then play the same game, drawing the tangent line to the graph at x1, f of x1, figuring out where that tangent line crosses the x-axis to get a newer guess, x sub 2, same formula works for that. It's the old guess minus the function at the old guess divided by the derivative at the old guess to get my new guess. And I can just keep playing this game over and over again, hoping that each iteration brings me closer to a place where the function's value is in fact 0. Let's just summarize the formula. So in summary, I could say that my new guess, which I'll call x sub n plus 1, is my old guess minus the function's value at my old guess divided by the function's derivative at my old guess. And I can just keep repeating this over and over again. When this works, right? when Newton's method actually succeeds, it works really well, and it zooms in on that root really quickly. The problem is that I can't promise you that Newton's method will actually work.